poverty into self-sufficiency. So I'm going to put my video on and then I'll talk a little bit afterwards and answer any questions you might have. just explain the programs. Um, like I said, uh, SELF offers a variety of programs. Um, our first, the first one they were describing, we actually have a Build Up Academy, which it is, as the previous person from OMJ was talking about. It actually focuses on teaching construction skills. Um, it's a free program. People come to our program, they actually can earn an OSHA 10 certificate and an NC triple R, triple C <coughs> construction certificate that actually helps them get a job. We also, attached to that, have a Jobs Now program where we teach them the skills like how to interview, how to write a resume. Um, all these programs that we offer are free, they are incentivized. Um, we are currently, we offer programs year-round, that's why I gave you a schedule. Actually, the schedule you have in front of you is the 2017 schedule. The 2018 schedule will be coming out soon. It will be very similar in nature to the one you see in front of you. We also offer um, an IDA program, which is something I've never heard of. I'm a social worker by trade, and I've never heard there would be any help for people to actually earn money matched money to start their own business, buy a home, or, or go back to school. In our IDA program, people are asked if you can save a thousand dollars, we'll match you two to one. So we didn't get that when I was in school. I had to go into debt. I don't know about the rest of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and we also offer a micro-enterprise program. That would be for people who are low income or interested in starting their own business. What they do, they would go through a series of classes and then they would learn how to start the business and have the opportunity to work on improving their credit and possibly get a low interest loan up to $5,000 to get their business off the ground. Um, we offer them a variety of settings. We have classes both in Hamilton and Middletown for our microenterprise program. We also have a Jobs Now program, which is it's a relatively short program. They, there are six classes. They meet twice a week. They learn how to write a resume, how to interview for a job. Um, a lot of the people we have coming through our programs have been maybe unemployed for a particular period of time, maybe have some criminal history, maybe they, you know, recovering from addiction and they're just starting to get interested in getting back into being employed again, and we offer those skills. We also, along with that, link them to case managers, so they are followed once they complete our program for up to a year. And along with that, we're also able to offer some emergency supports. What we find, like for example, we have one lady go through our, our Jobs Now program, and she was getting back, and she actually interviewed at AK Steel, and was all excited and fired up. I'm going to get a job! 
but she needed metatarsal boots to start the job, and she didn't have, it was like a little over $200 to start the job. We were able to get her the money she needed to get the shoes so she could get out the door and back into that workforce. Um, let's see. Uh, we also, along with that, if you guys have heard of self, how many has heard of, heard of self before? Now, if I was going to ask each of you, how have you heard of them, I would lay money, you would say, I know you guys help with utility assistance. Mm -hmm. You're right, we do. We also manage the PIT program, PIT Plus, and we offer weatherization. I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but you can get, if you're low income, living in either a house or an apartment, you can get free weatherization. It is a process. If you're in an apartment, your landlord would have to agree, yes, I want my home fixed, which the landlord wouldn't say no, you know, come on. <laughs> but it is free, and they can apply for that as well, which actually helps with the energy assistance bill. So, let's see if I can use here. Oh, we also offer, I said we have all these things. That's why I wanted a video. Uh, we also have, we run, it's called Neighbors Who Care. What that is, is a free home repair service for low income people. People apply for our services. Right now, this year, we have repaired over 150 homes in Butler County. We have logged in over 25,000 volunteer hours to get that work done. We also, in the summer, have what's called group work camps. What we do, we get local churches, not just local churches, churches from throughout the United States send people here. A lot of times it's team volunteers. They come here, they spend a week here. They typically we put them up at one of the local schools. They sleep in the gym. <laughs> and they go out into the community, and for a week they paint, they scrape paint, they fix things up. Um, so that's a really great way for kids to learn to give back to the community. Um, let's see if I've missed anything else. Okay. So, once again, I want to emphasize all our programs are free. Um, if you have questions, you are welcome to call up, ask for Gail, ask for Annette. If you're not sure if your client could use help, please call and let us know. Um, so, with that being said, Questions. I know I covered a lot today. Yes, ma'am. Where do you get your funding? We, you know, that's a good question. We have a variety of funding sources because we need it. <laughs> we are state funded, which actually ends up, you know, the state is federally funded and it trickles down to us. We have a community service block grant and we also have a community development grant. We also have several grants from local community foundations. Um, We've, dis we've discovered to keep these kinds of programs going, we have to have a variety of sources because you know, we, the money's, you know, we have to really work hard to get the money we need to keep the programs going. Yes, ma'am. Um, how does the referral work with the neighbors who care? Neighbors who care. We actually just have, you know, if you have a client who might want to do that, let us know. We send them an application. It's not a huge application, but we do need to verify like their income and you know, their U.S. citizens, eligibility, that type of thing, and then we sign them up. And we, we typically do not do plumbing, electric, or roofing. But if you have a client that still needs that, we also are able to locate some other agencies here in the local community, like um, people working cooperatively, that can help with those kinds of repairs. Other questions? I know that you guys are going to have a lot to take in today, so I was really glad we put together that handout just to kind of help you. And like I said, I know there's a schedule on for this year, but keep it around. You never know when you're going to come up with a client who might need help with something. And we're a good starting point. We're also part of the No Wrong Door initiative. I'm assuming Heather's going to talk more about where clients can come in and maybe we don't offer the service, but our, we'll make sure we link them to other people who do. Okay? Thank you. I'm sorry about my technical difficulties. <laughs> if they want to watch that, so is that on your website? That video? Um, the video, I believe there is a link on our website. I'm sorry, it's relatively new. We just put it out in the last month or so. so I think I saw it on your Facebook page. It was on right. Facebook a couple of weeks back. We can keep the DVD here for, for, the, 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 afternoon for the afternoon session. session. Yeah, audio. Hopefully, we'll be able to get it up and running. Yeah. All right. Thank you.
guys as they look forward to refer away. We're more than happy to help. Awesome. Thank you, Gail. Good job. All right. So we're, I think, a little ahead of schedule. That's what that means. Break time. <laughs> Unless you want to, I mean, I can come up with something to talk about, like, yeah. impromptu. Or you could take a few minutes, introduce, introduce yourself to somebody you don't know, ask them about their work, over a cup of coffee, and a uh, sticker card. Let's do that. <laughs>
two rows is really sleepy, are you? Okay, good. Never. You guys have any, there's this one person that I work with that, gosh, it never fails. He'll be in a training or she'll be, I'm not going to say to you. <laughs> this person, this person uh, never fails. If he, if he or she is in a meeting that's longer than like an hour and a half long, Donnie, and it's like, oh, seriously? You're getting paid to be here. Like, really? Anyway. What after one after lunch and all that? Yeah. 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 I think we should all um, have a little cock in our office and we should be able to take a little nap. Or like just put a pallet under our desk. Right? kind of cover the who, what, uh, what our mission is, what exactly we do, um, the prices of our trips, and I'll mention the ridership data. Um, so BCRTA, uh, we're a political subdivision of the state of Ohio. Um, we were created in 1994 as a public agency. Um, and we've been, it, it, even though we were created in 94, it uh, actually didn't exist for several years after that. Um, and we've been a small agency due to our funding, um, which does not come from Butler County, uh, or very little does. We don't have a tax base. Um, so it's an interesting situation for a transit authority to be in. Um, our mission is to support Butler County's quality of life and economic development through public transportation solutions. Um, so we offer general public demand response, which is uh, we call curb to curb, right? We call and schedule a ride. Uh, we pick you up at one place, take you to another. Um, So we have um, regional commuter buses, which are called the R routes. Um, we have uh, R1, 2, 3, 4, and 6. Um, those connect the kind of three urban hubs, Hamilton, uh, Oxford, and Middletown. And then the R4 and R6 run from Middletown, or sorry, from Hamilton to Tri-County Mall, where it connects to uh, Metro service in Cincinnati. We also have some local fixed routes, um, and that those are in Oxford and in Middletown. Middletown is its own system, uh, MTS, but we manage their system. And then we provide ADA demand response, which um, is required by the ADA, and that's in Oxford and MTS where we have local routes. So anybody that qualifies and lives within three quarter mile of a fixed route service um, is entitled to that ADA demand response service. So as I said, the public uh, demand response, it's curb to curb. They need to call in advance to make a reservation. Um, right now, it's actually 
you kind of have to call two days in advance to make that reservation. Um, it is possible to get same day service, but that's as uh, available. And so it often isn't there if you try to call and make a reservation immediately. Uh, these trips cost between 10 and $30 per trip, uh, depending on where you start and where you end. Um, we also have a uh, special price for trips within Hamilton and Fairfield, Monday to Friday from 10 a.m. to 1.30 p.m., and it's $5 a trip. Um, so we're, we are currently looking at ways to um, kind of make that fair structure more accessible to people, um, but that's what we have right now. And we run weekdays, the demand response service runs weekdays from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. Then our regional commuter routes, uh, like I said, the R routes, the R1 goes from Hamilton to Middletown. That runs every hour. Uh, we were recently able to increase the frequency of that. It was running once every two hours, um, which is a bit of a difficult timetable for public transit. Um, so we were able to put another bus on there and cut those headways in half. Um, and hopefully we can do more of that in the future. Um, the R2 would connect Oxford and Middletown. The R3 goes from Oxford to Hamilton. Um, and then the R4, like I said, that one runs to Tri-County from Hamilton. And the R6 um, is our job connector. So it also goes from uh, Hamilton to Tri-County, but we try to go by many of the businesses along those routes, factories and warehouses and things um, to try to provide some service, get people to work. Um, the cost is $2 a trip, and that's true on all of the uh, BCRTA routes except for the Middletown routes, which are $1.25. And transfers are always free. Um, the R routes run weekdays from 6 a.m. to actually the, to about 9 p.m. now, um, since we've been able to add a little bit of service. Then our Oxford and Middletown routes, we have six Oxford routes that are essentially circulators around campus and uh, the city of Oxford. Um, those are our longest running. They're funded by the university. Um, they run from about 6 o'clock every day until um, 10 p.m. on weekdays and 3 a.m. on Friday and Saturday. Uh, MTS, the Middletown, they have four lines that run throughout uh, Middletown, and I'll show a maps and uh, of these in a little bit. Uh, but yeah, they run um, from 6 a.m. to about 6:30 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturday they run 8 a.m. to 4:30. We have a half fare program um, where riders can apply for a card that entitles them to pay half fare. Um, so that applies to people that are 65 and older, or if they have trouble getting on or off a standard bus, standing in a moving bus, reading informational signs, hearing directions of the bus driver, understanding signs or directions of the bus driver. Um, so there's a whole variety of reasons. Uh, anybody that is already uh, has ADA certification is also eligible for half fare. Um, and this is a program that you have to apply to uh, get approved for. So as I mentioned, our, um, our funding is fairly unique in the transportation world because we receive very minimal local funding um, we have no tax base within the county, uh, so we get, so the R6 uh, in particular, the job shuttle, 
is funded by Hamilton and then some Butler County development grants. Uh, Miami University funds the service up there and then also part of the um, R3 which connects Hamilton, Miami Hamilton to Oxford. Um, oops, sorry. And the city of Middletown funds the Middletown system and then they also assist with uh, the R1 and R2 which both go to Middletown as well. Um, and those buses also connect to Miami University in Middletown. And then we have federal grants of slightly over a million dollars. Um, so yeah, the, our office hours, normal eight to five. Um, I have rider guides and schedules up here if anybody's interested that has all of this information here. Um, one other thing that I wanted to show is we've recently have an app now and a website where you can track the buses, um, which is a nice addition. So I'll show you the routes and our website. Um, so this is the overview of the county, and you can see the bus is moving there. So. Right, the connection is Oxford, Middletown, Hamilton, Tri-County. So these are, are the commuter routes. Um, and then this is our Miami service. As I said, it uh, kind of covers the whole city and campus in Miami with fairly frequent service. And oh, I didn't mention, but so the R3 and the R1, those run every hour, but the R2, R4, and R6, those are still running every two hours, um, unfortunately, but hopefully we can fix that in the future. Uh, and this is the Middletown system. Uh, just a brief overview, covers a, a good part of the city there. Um, this app and uh, website is called Buzz Tracker. Um, it's spelled a bit funny, like uh, tech things like to do, but you will find that on here. It's B U Z T R A K R. So, uh, but I think that's very useful. I think it's helped people a lot, especially with uh, catching some of the more infrequent buses. So, uh, that's brief overview of what we offer. Uh, any questions? Yeah. I noticed you go to Tri-County. Yes. Do you also go outside of Butler County, like Corinth, down to different places like that? No, no, we do not go outside of Butler County. Okay. Well, a lot of people that sort of work with uh, families that might have young children, mm -hmm. do they need to work in the car seat on the bus? What do no. do for kids? Um, kids just ride like adults essentially okay. um, you know and it's up to their parents if they want to hold them in their lap or the one thing a full a, sh a stroller needs to be folded and put away so it's not blocking the aisle um, and kids under the age I forgot what um, kids ride free uh, under the age of five I know I went to Miami and the R3 was a lifesaver. It's like yeah, it's oh, that's great. One of the best services, I think. So. That's good to hear. How have we used it? The R3? Well, or, oh, I didn't go over our ridership then. So okay. um, our demand response uh, is open to anybody. Uh, we also provide service for the Butler County uh, VA veterans and for Butler County DD. We do about 250 demand response rides per day. Um, our ridership overall for our fixed routes last year was about 450,000 people. So. so that's like trips? That yes, that's yeah. trips, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Anything else? All right.
well, thank you for having me. And like I said, there's uh, schedules and rider guides up here that contain uh, much of the information I went over and our uh, website and app. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we get a bit of a break now, so you guys are welcome to take a little walk outside, get up, move around, get something else to eat. Um, our next presentation is the American City Golf Department, and they're supposed to start about 10, 15. Yeah. If they, since we're breaking a little early, if they're here a little early, we'll start. Thank you, Jared. Uh, I have two, okay. 15 right. years old. Right. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah.